We got a more on here. Presenting the distinguished international news commentator and foreign correspondent. This has been an extraordinary week in world affairs. Now I told Hillary Clinton that that's moronic. Hello and welcome to Small Gold Week in Moronica for the week ended March 17th, 2018. The week's news that made you scratch your head, cringe, or just say, that's moronic. Well, this just in, Justin Trudeau in the news again. Uh Uh-oh, we got a moron here. The Queen of Belgium, or the Belgian royalty, made a trip to Canada, and not only did Justin Trudeau not show up, but the royal couple was greeted with a German flag as opposed to a Belgian flag. I suppose the official excuse is you can't blame good old Justin Trudeau. He couldn't make it. He was busy selecting his costume for his next overseas visit. Unbelievable. Now, Hillary explains to Indians why she lost, because this is a burning question across India. Why did Hillary Clinton lose? Well, she reiterated her, but changed the the verbiage, her deplorable excuse, basically saying that the reason she lost, or actually the reason she won, she identifies herself as a winner, was she won in the areas that were diverse the areas that were progressive moving forward, and that she lost in all the backwards areas. She also managed to throw in a little, uh, well, kind of a pandering to Indians. She said, you know, the people voted for Trump. They're not interested in blacks getting jobs or women getting jobs or Indians getting promotions. (laughs) I suppose now she carries around curry in her purse where she tells Indians that she carries around her in her purse, just as she once told a group of African Americans pandering for their vote that she carried hot sauce in her purse if it wasn't a bad enough week for Hillary. She then slipped and tripped, fell down a flight of stairs twice, and then she went home to take a nice warm bath and fell again. So she injured her wrist. In that case, there's Hillary slip sliding down her the stairs, showing off her progressive forward stepping, And then she slipped in the bathtub and fractured her wrist, leading some of my subscribers to say, when is she going to go away? Not just my subscribers, but the Democratic Party is probably fed up with her as well. This week in Moronica, the student walkout over gun control. This is moronic on many levels. Not only are students being manipulated, I thought most students, most young people are, unless... They have organic type of movements. No one told kids to stick safety pins in their faces and wear mohawks during the punk movement. Same with hippies. But it seems now that young people are being manipulated into believing that they should be anti-gun and that they should be pro-gun legislation because as all kids know, legislation works. Legislation is what makes the world go round. And everyone pays attention to legislation. So if we could just get some legislation, well, then we could end the gun violence. Now, to highlight the ironic stance that these kids are taking, there are laws against kids just getting up and walking out of their classrooms. Well, they seem to ignore those laws and went ahead and left their classrooms anyway. Well, don't they realize that Criminals and lunatics are not going to pay attention to any laws that the government might pass about not owning guns and not using them on schools. So it proves that legislation is meaningless if people don't want to follow it. And do you really expect, if you think this one through, that the government would be able to enforce this type of law? And if you're against the Trump administration and you're against racist cops and Why would you want them to be the ones to enforce the laws and the only ones to have the guns? It seems to me that a better solution, if I were a 16-year-old or a 15-year-old, I would want to demand some type of security. Not the security of a law or some legislation, but I'd want to have some type of physical presence. And it doesn't have to be teachers being armed, but actually professional armed guards at the school, just like you have at most other places where there's public gathering. But what if the kids were just to get up next week and walk out of school because they wanted to protest 
uh, the lack of security at their school. Not for gun legislation, do you think you do you think you'd see all these fawning syncopants? Oh, I admire the children for their courage, and they're not. Well, <laughs> it's unbelievable. They're saying they admire them for their courage. Their teachers are condoning what they're doing. In one instance, in Baltimore, they paid for them to go to have their voices heard. Well, I don't think they'd be too happy. These people that are fawning over the kids as being courageous, if they decided on their own without outside money without the city of baltimore paying without their teachers approval if they just got up and walked out and wanted to protest that they don't have armed guards at their school now may i recommend now we also see before i make my recommendation there were teachers placed on leave for daring to question the school walkout this whole thing wasn't about a type of remembrance of the, the the children that were killed it was more about a political we want gun control we want it now and they wanted to make it appear as if all kids felt this way and all teachers felt this way so they placed teachers on leave if they didn't if they questioned this there were kids that were suspended that didn't want to participate so this is basically top down i would say it, it's akin to fascism where you take the kids you indoctrinate them with your point of view and then you march them out into washington from all over the country and you try to claim that everyone wants this and everyone says this is the right way and if you disagree you get suspended now, my recommendation to end this moronic. Now, last week we saw Dopra saying, well, this is just like the Freedom Fighters, and they're going to be heard, these kids, and we... Okay, well, how about instead of pulling the kids out of school to go to protests, how about we organize, the teachers organize essay writing competitions so they actually learn to collect their thoughts, learn to do research and understand how to make a persuasive argument? And how about having debates over gun control in the Second Amendment. Instead of promoting that the way to be heard is basically community organizing and, and then marching and showing up en masse with signs and yelling that you want something done. In other words, you want someone else to do something and that something else is legislation because that's going to solve everything. That's my recommendation to end that, Moronica. Now, don't forget the gumball machine. Now, this one is akin to what we saw last week. Where the Well, actually, this is stupider. This one is even dumber than the guy who knocked over the uh, speeding camera because one could argue that there's some logic in the guy wants to speed, so he knocks over the speeding camera. What this guy did is truly moronic. I have no idea what he was doing. He decides to go into a machine. Here you go. There's the gumball machine. He wants to take that because everyone knows how valuable a gumball machine is on the black market. And, of course, he's going to lose all the gumball. There they go. Out goes. The so he's not going to get the value of the gumballs, but that machine must be worth just I, I don't know how much he can get. He could sell it for parts or something. He's struggling to get it out. Now, he, he's given up on the gumballs, and it's probably not going to be a working machine because he's already smashed the top off. And there he is struggling. He's going to get that. Well, he's, he's going to get that machine because people need this machine. They go for millions. And, uh, well, he's halfway out himself. So he's actually oh, he's trying to pick up the gumball. Uh, <clears throat> there he goes. Nope, nope. He's going to figure out how the thing works. Well, he just broke another piece off there. Uh, now he's figured out there might be money inside. That's what he needs. He needs to get the money. He's not stealing it for the machine. He's stealing it because there's probably $8.25 worth of quarters in there. Now he's got an idea. He's going to come back. And he's going to get this thing. Now he figures the full... Four he got it out. And now, probably lost half the quarters. He's going to throw it over. Now you think about the amount of time that this moron used to get that gumball machine. The effort... He probably could have made a lot more money and not had potential criminal liability for what he did. Now we see President Sanders and Warren. These are my two favorites here. There was a Hill briefly tried to promote the idea that a Sanders-Warren ticket would crush Donald Trump, giving hope to liberals across the country that this would be the dream ticket. Well, as we'll see, Dizzy Miss Lizzie said later, She's not interested in running for president. So that leaves us with Bernie Sanders. Now, he's got his own collusion projects. They're trying to claim now that Bernie Sanders had a foreign campaign worker from Australia, and therefore he was colluding illegally. And I'm not going to show you the moron pictures here, but this particular Australian guy, he's out at night, and he's pulling down 
uh, Donald Trump signs awful lawns, and, well, that's pretty moronic. Now, the other thing about our friend Bernie, he decides he's going to go and show the kids that he's on the side on gun control. Well, he shows up with an armed posse. Now, only a socialist would bring guns to an anti-gun rally and insist that he had the moral high ground. He realizes that there's lunatics out there that might want to do him harm. And therefore, the sane part of Bernie, not the crazy Bernie, thought that it might be a good idea to have arm protection. And there's some pictures here. I won't show them to you. You can click on the links. And you can see Bernie with his arm guard. But that didn't stop old Bernie from stopping off for a hot dog after a good day's worth of protest. And here he is struggling to find his wallet. And, well... He probably said to the guy, just charge it to the 1% of this country. Because after all, they owe him a hot dog after a day's worth of protest. Now the other moronic thing was, a lot of these protests over the guns turned violent. Not to gun violence, thank thankfully for that. You know, gun violence is bad. But good old-fashioned violence where you just punch people, beat people up, destroy property. Well, that happened in a number of these protests in California and also in Chicago, looting of stores. Because after all, if you're for legislation to end gun control, certainly that'll solve everything, and therefore you could be free to loot because you're not going to get hurt in your classroom. Now, the mayor of London in the news. Now, this is pretty moronic because... He seems to be going global. I will have a video out later in the week on the English hate speech laws, which the mayor was uh, in favor of, and he was in Texas talking about them. Now, why he's in Texas talking about hate speech? you are trying to bring this whole concept that we need this global crackdown on hate speech. Well, I have more to say about that uh, later in the week. But you see, here we have the mayor of London He's published a new strategy to tackle violence against women and girls in London, backed by a record forty-four million pound investment. Now, I don't. I'd like to see the strategy. Normally, the way you stop violence against people is you just have uh, police presence, and that generally cuts down on it. Or you have increased prosecutions. I don't know what his record forty-four million pounds is. I'm just assuming Moronica here, but it just seems that. Could be Now, here he says, it's time to act on hate speech. This seems to be his, his big issue. Now, he himself has been the subject of hate speech, and rightfully, he has a legitimate grievance. When someone makes death threats, that's not hate speech. That is a violation of current laws. When somebody, not just, you can criticize the mayor all you want. That could be deemed hate speech, but I don't think that's a problem. I think that's fine. You can criticize him all you want. But once you start threatening him, then that crosses the line. But there's already a law against that. And so what it seems to me, and we'll get into this next week, what he's talking about are these nebulous, void, I would think for vagueness type statutes where basically someone interprets what hate speech is and it's not based on any intent of the person uttering or writing the words, but on the basis of whoever might hear it. it. says they might be offended, they might find it hateful, and therefore we either have to take it down and or prosecute the person. And that's a very dangerous precedent to set, and let's hope it doesn't come to America, but it seems like he was in the United States promoting that. Dizzy Miss Lizzie won't give up on her supposed Native American heritage. And she refuses to take a, a DNA test. Now that would prove once and for all. And she was asked by somebody, look, somebody, I think it was on one of the TV stations, pretty much, I think it was MSNBC, one of the stations that should be uh, favorable to her, says, look, why don't you just take the test? If it shows that any amount of in, uh, Amer Native American um, ancestry, well, then you shut this guy, Donald Trump, up once and for all. And, you know, but she said, no, I'm not going to do that. And so they asked her, are you a Native American? Her answer was, well, my mother played the piano and my father really fell in love with this woman. She was wonderful. My mom, I'm basically saying, I don't know. So then she went on to say 
that um, she's got all these memories or she was told by her family that uh, there was animosity amongst the, her mother and father's family. And then there was research on this that showed there was a nice announcement in the local paper that didn't seem to be any animosity whatsoever. So the point is that dizzy Miss Lizzie has dug herself so deep into a hole that she can't back down. But yet, I can offer her a way out of this. Look, she could say, she could take the test, find out that she's not Native American, or find out that she is, and she wins. But if she finds out she's not Native American, she will clearly be praised by her left-wing media as being courageous for having taken the test. And she can also argue that while not Native American, she's identified her whole life as Native American, and who is anybody to question her self-identification? So I'm not sure why she's not taking that route. I think she might eventually, if she ever does run for president, she'll probably have to take that route. But uh, surprising that I think it's moronic that she's insisting that she's Native American and she's offering no proof other than the fact, it seems, that her mom played the piano and her dad loved her for it. And of course, American Indians or American Native Americans are not so happy about her appropriating an identity. They seem to be less offended by Donald Trump calling her Pocahontas than by Elizabeth Warren claiming that she is indeed Native American. The next bit of moronic is a sad bit, and we've seen this too often on Small Gold's Moronica, is the treatment of animals. Last week we saw some moron throw a lit cigarette into a orangutan's enclosure in an Indonesian zoo, and the orangutan, monkey see, monkey do, or orangutan, orangutan do, orangutan see, orangutan do, starts smoking the cigarette, which is abusive to those poor orangutans. Now, this moron, working for the United Airlines, decides we can't have puppies on the plane. No, no, no. Now, first of all, if you bring a dog on the plane, it means that it's of a size that you're allowed to bring it on the plane, but for whatever reason, and I don't know the full story, but it certainly sounded like there was some moronica involved here. The flight attendant insisted that the woman and her daughter place the puppy in the overhead bin, and the 10-month-old puppy, sadly, perished in the flight. So kudos to United Airlines for being particularly moronic. I just don't even think you could say put them under the under the seat with a they have these dog carriage uh, these dog carrying things where they're properly ventilated and you could put the dog on the ground but still I don't even see why they couldn't hold the poor pup in their laps now global warming threat to ice cream now Ben and Jerry's I give Ben and Jerry's credit because. Ben & Jerry's is not like Enterprise, is not like, oh, Hertz Rent-A-Car or Papa John's Pizza. You know, all these companies, Target, those are all companies that provide a generic service. And no one expects them to be political in their advertising or in their policies. And... I would think even Starbucks is pretty upfront about what they are. If they want to be social justice warriors, they want to draw on their cups. Well, people who go there, they expect that. And that's part of the Starbucks experience. And that's a great thing that if people want to go and pay $6 for a cup of coffee and have a conversation about race because this is an important uh, moment, then that's great. Then they go pay their 6 bucks. They have the barista draw on their coffee whatever slogan they want and they pay for it and that's capitalism that's great same with ben and jerry's ben and jerry's has never been shy about promoting causes that's the whole point it's like social justice ice cream you eat that you feel better and cherry garcia ice cream they're very clever and they make a decent product but once they start rolling into global warming and the threat to ice cream i think they open themselves up to a bit of ridicule and for this week's Moronica, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to ridicule Ben and Jerry's. Now, they were trying to claim that the reason we have to be worried about climate change is because when there's climate change, certain of these plants are going to die, and they're so important in the production of some of our favorite 
Ben and Jerry's ice cream. And so this climate change threat, forget about rising waters and, and people dying and um, economic disaster. No, climate change is a threat to Ben and Jerry's certain flavors of ice cream. So I think already they're on the wrong foot. If they think this is a reason to get behind carbon taxes because you want to save Ben and Jerry's ice cream, then I think you have your priority screwed up. And now you're just basically promoting your own product over if they perceive climate change to be a real threat, the least that people need to be worried about is Ben and Jerry's certain flavors of ice cream going away. But I would argue that Ben and Jerry's themselves cause global warming, which makes it even more moronic because cows cause global warming via their passing of methane gas. Now, you think that's funny? It's not. That is a fact. In fact, it's such a fact that global warming proponents will move herds from one state to another in order to kind of space out the uh, global warming impact of the methane gases of cows. So first of all, one could argue that Ben and Jerry's, through the fact that they're reliant on cows, and these cows would, no, would not be uh, bred, we wouldn't have as many of them if it wasn't for the fact that there's a demand for ice cream. And cows are used in the production of ice cream, and therefore Ben and Jerry's, I would argue, is contributing to global warming. And then there's the issue of diabetes. Diabetes is probably a far more immediate threat to people than global warming. And you got all that sugar and cream. So here they are pontificating or taking the moral high ground that somehow we need to stop global warming to protect their business when their business actually is assisting in global warming and also their product is one could argue in a nanny state very dangerous all that sugar and cream and diabetes and let's not forget that ben and jerry's ice cream is an enormous amount of electricity that's used to keep their ice cream cold and frozen and that contributes to global warming because the bulk of electricity comes from coal, big carbon emissions, correct? And then they ship it all over the country. Why can't people just buy their ice cream locally? So Ben & Jerry's has got a massive carbon footprint. And I think they're complaining about global warming when they contribute to it is moronic. We've got a couple of few stories. I don't think we're going to have time to cover them. But uh, we will see you next week.